and I suppose that toad leapt into Mr Fitz's lunchbox on its own accord. And what about the rice pudding in Miss Hackett's chair? Where did that appear from? Out of thin air? I don't know. Maybe. I'm innocent. Someone has it for me. Save your ridiculous conspiracy theories for Mr Hines. Mr Hines? No, not him. I'll do anything. Please don't send me there. According to Quinn, the standard of behaviour in St Jerome's had hit an all-time low and drastic measures were required. She had set up a pupil reform initiative for the socially offensive non-compliant, otherwise known as prison. Prison is no walk in the park. You work in total silence and your tour guide is Mr Hines. Apparently, Mr Hines used to work as a traffic warden but he was fired for being too mean. With four students already sent to prison this week, the question on everyone's lips was, who's next? No one throws my bag up a tree and gets away with it. Johnny's been sent to Quinn's prison. How is that at getting away with it? Without a trial too. What she's doing is a gross violation of our civil liberties. A what of what? You can read about it tomorrow. Do you mind? Sorry, is this better? Do you really think Johnny would do something like this? He's an idiot. It makes sense. But look at your brother. What? So I've got the looks of the family. Johnny's half-headed size. Even he wouldn't be this stupid. <laughs> yes, he would. I saw Johnny do it. There you go. Case closed. Zara's only one potential eyewitness. It's not proof. What if Johnny's innocent? Too late. He's in the nick now. And remember, Pupil Reform Initiative is a student's last chance. Anyone found breaking a single rule while in the initiative faces immediate exclusion. No exception. Harsh. If any of you would like to join Mr Hines, general insolence and disorder should do the trick. Thank you, Mr Stevens. Is responsible for this. Who? <laughs> Herod Sharky. This can't be good. I didn't do it. Look, it's just part of growing up, being a boy. Sure, it's not more than a harmless prank. The fact is, Herod has no respect for authority. The only time he isn't disruptive in class is when he's sleeping. Clearly, the boy is being given no discipline at home. He gets plenty. Just the other day, I cut his TV viewing from eight to six hours per night. Oh, that leaves a whole, what, two hours for homework? Look, it's been hard since Mrs. Sharkey passed away. I've got to look after three kids on my own. Which is why child welfare are coming tomorrow. I've suggested Herod is given more Appropriate care. Appropriate? By a foster family. Uh, I'm not staying with the fosters. The dog stinks. It's just that with your family's criminal record... Criminal? What do you mean criminal? Look, I have you know us sharkies are reform pillars of the community now. I can see that. Child welfare and split my family up. No way, sorry. Herod. I thought we agreed to stay out of trouble. But I haven't done anything wrong. Dad, what are you going to do about this? Oh. Promise from now on I'll stay out of trouble too, OK? I meant, what are you going to do about Herod? He's already in prison. One more stunt like this, and he'll be excluded. What would a mum thought about that? No, you're right. We can't let this go on. From now on, I promise, I'll make more of an effort. But Red, I have been trying, son, OK? I know. But maybe you need to start trying a little bit harder. Where is my M3? 
MP3. Mess. Somebody's stolen my MP3. It was like totally way expensive. Stop screaming, girl. What did it look like? Pink, obviously. Hang on. I saw Ernie Boyle with a pink MP3 last week. Boyle! What did I do? What? I've never seen that before in my life. Ernie's life. The next chapter in which would be called The Day He Got Sent to Quinn's Prison. Quinn had really outdone herself this time, and Hines was beginning to do a roaring trade. But there was always room for one more pitiful specimen to experiment on. It was then that I realised it only seemed to be boys in our year that were disappearing. I smell a story. I smell a case. Move out the way. Pinks are coming. Move it. You must be psychic. I was just about to hire you. What if you had stolen your personality? Do you want the job or not? He doesn't work for Pinks. I didn't feel so bad about taking pink money. So... This is where the item was stolen. Can you describe it? There's some trees, some flowers. The item. Well, you know Shona Biderbeck? The most amazing pop star ever. Well, last week I bought a genuine lock of Shona Biderbeck's hair. You bought hair? The last time I saw it, we were sitting on that bench there. So, do you have any idea who might have taken it? Uh, yeah. Herod Sharkey. He saw me with it yesterday and said it would be a shame if I lost it. <laughs> it's all right, April. <laughs> Don't worry, you're OK. What's that problem? Red didn't like it, but this was one lead I had to follow up. And Herod's bag could be evidence. Don't tell me that's... <sighs> oh, no, it's not. Look at these boots. These petals look familiar. It doesn't prove anything. You're right. Let's work it through. April is sitting over there at that bench. The only way to approach without being seen would be to creep along this fence. That explains the show. And then through the flower bed. Same flower. I'm sorry, Red. You're not the one whose brother's going to be taken into care. Into care? Quinn's put child welfare onto Dad. If Herod gets excluded, how's that going to look? But if we prove Herod's innocent, it could help. What's that? Bubble gum. Isn't that the same gum Harold was chewing today? Get rid of it. What? Destroy the evidence. Drop the case now. I'm sorry, Red. I can't do that. It goes against everything Bernstein stands for. He doesn't have to know. But I will. When I accepted my badge, I took a pledge. I can't turn my back on that. But you can turn your back on your best mate. Red! I mean it. It's your choice. The badge or me. Good luck with your case, detective. Red! Am I doing the right thing? You're doing your job. Wait a minute. Give me those boots. Whoever made these footprints were the boots on the wrong feet? Oh, sorry, I have to go. If I'm late for art class again, I'm history. Art class? Hang on, I've got an idea. Herod, Herod, wake up! Dune, get off! Oh, I'm sorry. Dreaming of something nice, like showing a bite of back. What's that? I don't believe it. Herod, you idiot! Genuine lot of Shona by... Shona by the Beck's hair. Oh, thank you. Nice try. But I know you stole it from April. Child welfare are coming tomorrow. I told you to keep out of trouble, Herod. Hang on. You don't really think that I stole it, do you? Just whatever you do. Don't let Moon see this, OK? While Red chewed over his problems, Mia chewed over the gum from the crime scene. Not really chewed. That'd be disgusting. But in the gum was a tooth mark, and with the help of some plaster, Mia made a mould. 
It showed what the tooth that had bitten into the gum looked like. This was a criminal's molar, and it was chipped. Don't tell me. Spinach for lunch? I haven't had spinach for a week. Oh. Well, his tooth isn't chipped. Looks like you're in the clear. Like I told Red, someone must have put this in my coat. Pretend you never saw this. Too late. It's evidence now. Red's gonna kill me. He's at me enough as it is already. Hold on. Red told you not to say anything to me. Maybe he thought you'd nick it or something. Yeah, or something. So, it wasn't her who dropped the gum in the flower bed. <laughs> what about all this? Who would go to that much effort just to set him up? The person who threw his bag in the tree, I suppose. It looks real enough. Hey! It's too thick. No one is here this greasy. You better not be talking about mine. This isn't human. No, it's shown a Vidabex. But what if her animal has long, straight hair? <laughs> Bless you. You should. I think I know where this came from. Mia loves horses, but there's just one small thing standing in between Mia and her dream, her allergy. So it came as no surprise that the hair April said was shown a bider bex was exactly the same <laughs> as a horse's, a perfect match. The question is, who faked it? Gotcha. Hey, Ernie, um, can you give me a... Get lost. I, I just wanted to ask. Dare you! Thanks a lot. Oh! Without Red, I was back to being the weird short kid no one talked to. Herod tells me you think he didn't do it. I always thought he was innocent. Yeah, right. The point is, I've got the evidence now. Everything's going to be fine. Yeah, now? But what about before? You could have broken up my family, Moon. You know I'd never let that happen. As long as it didn't come between you and your pledge to Bernstein. You asked me to tamper with evidence. That's the first thing of things not to do. There are more important things in your stupid badge, Moon. Look, I think I can prove who did all this, but I'm going to need your help. OK. You can have my help but only because I want to nail whoever did this to Herod. It doesn't mean we're going to be partners again or anything. Deal? Deal. Start talking! I didn't steal it! So why would anyone want to make it look like you did? I don't know, but April's had it in for me for weeks. Said if I didn't stop mucking around in class, I'd regret it. Wasn't so difficult, was it? Pleasure doing business with you. The Pinks were into makeup, pop stars, and the occasional petty crime. What did they care if people mucked around in class? We had to follow April to find out. Mia's right. The Pinks do meet up here every day before school. Well, why would anyone choose to come here this early? It's not that early. I think you might find for most people it is. Where's Mia, anyway? What's the use of a stakeout without a camera? What are they up to? Here's a thought. Let's go in there and find out. The gate's locked. I thought you were trying to go straight. Oh, it's my brother.
We need a better view. We're going up that tree. What? It's all a cover! People think we're stupid. Only interested in that brain dead sick and sex shown abide. I quite like her new single though. And it's so bad it's good, kinda way. But soon we'll get A's in every subject, enroll in the best universities, and finally run the country itself. What? Disruptive boys, we've now completed phase one. All easy targets have been successfully sent to prison. One more trip up from them, and they'll be out of our lives forever. If Half Moon had found that lock of hair, our first operation of Phase 2, Exclusions, would be over by now. But today, we must complete the mission ourselves and get Herod Sharkey excluded. Then finally, we can take aim at our ultimate target, the biggest known threat facing our empire. Half Moon. Wow, I'm that much of a threat. Steady on, hero. <laughs> <gasps> What's that? We've been compromised! <laughs> Maybe you should put new batteries in. Maybe we should get out of here. Go, go, go! Come on! Get down! Go ahead. I'll, I'll be okay. Are you insane? I don't know if you've noticed, but the pinks are after your blood.
with him later. But first, we have to finish what we started. <sighs> Listen. They've gone. No signal. But we have to tell Quinn what April's doing before Herod gets in trouble. I know. Move. Red. I said move. Red! The door opens inwards. I tried to tell you. Have you got any better ideas? should be lifting up. And now, sliding across. Yeah, the next thing I was going to suggest was making a magnet out of a battery spanner and wire. Look me in the eye and tell me I'm not a genius. You're not a genius. If anyone asks, we can say you open the door, you know, if that will make you feel better. We have to get out of here fast. Here he is. Principal Quinn is a... Principal Quinn is a psycho, and like you didn't write it, Write it? I can't even read it. We better stall Quinn before she sees that. I agree it would be in Herod's best interest to be with his real family, but unfortunately, Mr. Sharkey can't cope. And Herod should be placed with parents who can. Miss, you've got to come quick. It's Herod Sharkey. You won't believe what he's just done. April got to Quinn first, so we set up a roadblock. Herod needs the discipline of a proper strict new family. And a new school, don't forget. Ah, oh, Sharky Senior. We're looking for your brother. Talking of Sharkies, I'm doing a story on why boys have gone bad. She's busy right now. As I have such respect for your hardline policy on rule breaking, could I ask a few questions? Well, I'm sure I've got time to answer a few questions. I know what you've been up to. Have you been setting up boys you don't like? All I know is. I hired you to find my lock of hair, and I'm yet to see it. Let's start with Johnny Pierce, accused of throwing Herod's kit bag up a tree. And only one person claimed to see Johnny do it. Zara, your right hand, please. It's OK. I'm being brave. I found this under the tree. You stole Herod's bag, threw it into the tree, I broke your nail in the process. That's a lie. He's lying. Next to your list was Ernie Boyle. This time, Mercedes accused him of stealing her MP3 flare. Only I spoke to Ernie, and you told Quinn you'd seen him with it last week. And yet, Mia snapped a photograph of you listening to it yesterday, just hours before the player was reported stolen. You planted it on Ernie and made the whole thing up. Somebody stole my MP3, but it was like totally way better. Hang on, I saw Ernie Boyle with a pink MP3 last week. Boyle! What did I do? What? Your main target, however, was Herod. You'd already set him up as the main culprit before you planted the chewing gum on the doorknob for Quinn to find. Before you even threw his bag in the tree. First, you took his kit. Then you made it look like he'd climbed over the fence. And then you tried to leave his footprints at the scene of the crime. And the gum you left in the flower bed to make us think it was Herod's it was chewed by someone with a chipped tooth, open wide. So now you had Herod framed and in prison. All you needed was one crime to finish the job. So your cronies went to the stables to take care from a horse. You made it look like Shona Biderbex bought off the internet. You hired us to investigate, thinking Moon would prove Herod was guilty. A 
Admit it, April. You conspired to have perfectly innocent boys excluded and sent to Quinn's prison. Very clever, Moon. You seem pretty sure of the facts, don't you? But so am I. I'm sure Red broke into my dad's property. How else could you get through you the You can't game? prove anything. My dad's video surveillance can. It's exactly the kind of thing you can get sent to real prison for. And what would child welfare make of that? You wouldn't. Please, one more question. Please. I'll make you a deal. You keep quiet about what we've done, and I'll keep quiet about the game. You'll get rid of the tapes? All evidence will be destroyed. No. There's no deal. What? Ignoring evidence is Bernstein's number one rule. Well, it's kind of like number seven, you know, but... <laughs> you made the pledge. And Dinah, how important your badge is to you. You don't have to do this for me, Moon. Really? You mean that? Yeah. Thanks. OK, I accept. On one condition. You stop trying to get boys excluded. Hey? Starting with Herod. Oh. Hey? So, this is what Herod Sharkey's been up to. Actually, I don't think it was him. I just saw some other boys run off holding paintbrushes. And I'm so digging what you've done with your hair, miss. Is it a new look for you, you know? Yes, actually. <laughs> Not the first to notice. It didn't feel great keeping quiet about April, but at least I still had a partner. All the wrongly imprisoned boys eventually came back to class, and Quinn's prison was shut down. Life went on as normal at St Jerome's, but I now knew the real April, and I knew I had to watch my back. But so did she. Herod had his own score to settle. Hey, look at this, eh? Fit for Cleopatra herself. All right. So it's a bit rubbish, but I think you did all right. What do you reckon? Yeah. Cool. See you later. from the world, everything's changed. I should have told you about her. I should have told her about you. She's like a wild animal. I don't answer the team, wolf blood. The wolves are back and running. We are enemies now. Wild. It's a challenge. You're becoming something you can't control. Brand new wolf blood. Continues today at five on the CBBC channel.